ծանցության եւ ծանր բահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin as we always do by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is the period of Advent. It's a period of preparation. In Armenian, it's called Hisnag, based on the word Hisun, 50. It's 50 days of preparation for the great feast of Christmas. In Armenian, actually, we call Christmas Asvadza Haidnutun. Wow, what a long word. Asvadza, of course, is God. Haidnutun means revelation. In English, there's an appropriate word called theophany. Theo, of course, God, and the epiphany meaning the revelation. Theophany, Asvadza Haidnutun, means the revelation of God. Because on Christmas we celebrate that God did not abandon us. God loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten. He gave us Jesus Christ. And so the birth of Christ is connected with God's salvific program for all of us. Basically saying he didn't abandon us, loved us so much that he is with us. And as Christ says at the end of his ministry on earth, I am with you till the close of the ages. I am with you always. So it's this constant love that God has for us. And you know what? That's actually the story that comes to us from Holy Scriptures. A lot of times people find this and that in Scriptures. It's one book. It's one story of God's love for us. Now, in that book, in that uh, Holy Scripture, in the Holy Bible, or in Armenian we call it Asvaz Ashunch, the breath of God, we come to a very interesting story that our church fathers have given us during this period of Advent. And it comes to us from the uh, Gospel of Luke, in which Jesus talks about a great banquet. Now, what I'd like to do right now is I want to share with you probably a process that all of you go through. And let's, why don't you help me out, okay? I am going to compose my list of people that I'd like to invite for Christmas. So I'm going to put down over at the top Xmas because that's a shorthand for Christmas. And I'm going to put down the people that I would like to invite to a Christmas party. Well, let me think of who I could invite for that. I'm sure you've gone through this, right? We would definitely want to call our family, but not everybody, right? Some of our family, okay, let's just put down family with a question mark of who we're going to do. Let's put friends, but not all friends, you know. Some friends we want to invite because, you know, they're good friends. Other friends, they kind of let us down this year. So, you know, like you have your Christmas card list, same thing with the party list. You put down different people. This year it changes. Every year it changes. Now, what about gifts? Hmm. Well, I have a friend named Mugo, but you know, sometimes we call him um, Maguch, and you know, he's not that, that close to me. I think I could afford to spend maybe about $20 on him. I do have a friend named Lodig. Now, Lodig is a cool, she's pretty good, you know, and I know that she gives me good gifts, okay? So maybe I want to spend a little bit more on her because she can give something back to me, okay? That might be maybe up in the, that category. So I make my list. I check it twice. I figure out who's naughty or nice. And then I give out those gifts. Now, today what I'm going to share with you is a scriptural passage about what Jesus would want for his birthday. Wait a minute, Christmas is Jesus' birthday? Yeah, makes sense, right? Wouldn't we get a gift for him? Well, believe it or not, in Scripture, in this passage that I'm sharing with you today, that our church fathers have given us, it's Jesus' formula of what he wants for, for his birthday. And we're going to compare it with our list. Because on my list, I put down my Christmas card list, my party list, my gift list. I've put down all the people that I think that, you know, should be there. Maybe my boss, maybe uh, the people that are my neighbors. You know, one neighbor has, is a little bit more well-off. He drives a BMW, and the other one kind of drives a, a Ford. So I'm going to kind of make that value decision. I just have enough spots inside of my house, so I kind of want to make sure that I get the right people. Now, what does Jesus say over here? He says, when you give a dinner party or a banquet, what? Jesus is talking about a banquet? It's right here. 
Luke chapter 14. He says, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your kinsmen or your rich neighbors lest they invite you in return and you will be paid. What? Do you understand why Christianity has such a hard time? The real Christianity people can't, it can't get into? Because there's no profit motive. Okay, what are you going to get out of this? What do you mean? He says, invite, do not invite your friends or your brothers, your kinsmen or your rich neighbors because they can invite you in return and you will be repaid. When you give a feast, invite the poor, invite the maim, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. It's a very hard saying if you really think about it because it goes against everything we've been taught. You give to people who can give back to you. Jesus says no. He says, there's no reason to do that. He says, so what? Even the, even the worst people in the world know how to treat their friends, right? He says, you've got to rise to that higher occasion. Invite people who have absolutely no way of repaying you. The poor, the lame, the blind, the people who have no way of giving back to you. Well, what's the model there? Isn't that exactly the Christmas model? Isn't that exactly what Christmas is all about? God gave us a gift that we can't possibly repay. What are you going to give God? What are you going to give Jesus in return for that gift of life? In, that, in return for that gift of eternity, of having that eternal life? What are you going to do? What are you going to say? Okay, here, Jesus, have a, have a car, for your, have a car uh, for your birthday. What's he going to do with a car? He's created every animal in the world. He says, I've got the best stallions. I've got the Mustangs that can outrun all of your cars. What are you going to do? Give him a house? He's going to say, I've built the, the mountains, the monuments that are there forever. What are you going to do? Install a pool in his house? He's going to say, I've got the oceans. I've created the seas and, the, and all of the oceans. It's obvious. You can't give something to Jesus. So what he asks you in return is for you to take care of the, the people who can't take care of themselves. He says, when one of those stood up after hearing this, he said to them, blessed are you who, those who eat bread in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said to him, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, come. For all is now ready. So this guy's going to give a banquet and he says, let's go out there and uh, invite everybody who's supposed to come. You know, the list, the list of party people, okay? And he said, one by one, they each gave an excuse. The first one said, I have bought a field and I must go out and see it. I pray you, have me excused. The guy's bought a field, another one's bought a house. Hey, I've got to decorate my house, okay? I'm not going to come to your party because I've got to take care of those things. The other one said that I have bought a yoke of oxen and I have to go and examine them. Okay, what's the oxen? It's a car. I bought a brand new car. I want to take it out. I want to test drive it. I want to enjoy it. Put my family in it. Put the top down and enjoy it. I pray you, excuse me, I can't make it to your feast. The other one said, I have married a wife. Hmm, interesting. One buys oxen, the other one gets a wife, and that's an excuse. Okay, you know, you got your wife, you've got your husband. Hey, I want to have a good time. I don't have time for any of this. I can't come to you. And though, so Jesus explains that the story continues like that. So the servant came and reported this to his master, said that these people had refused your invitation. The householder, in anger, and to his servants, he says, go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, sir, what you have commanded, we have done. And still there is room. And the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited shall taste my banquet. God's invitation is for all of us. Who are the poor? Who are the lame? Who are the maimed? 
Well, you can look at them and you can say that, okay, there's people that are homeless, there are people in hospitals. But do you get it that in the sight of God, we all are in that category. Each of us is poor in spirit. Why? Because we don't see the beauty that's all around us. Look at the beauty. Take some time today to just look at a small little flower. Look at the smile in your child's eyes. How could you possibly put a price on that or even understand that? When you look at that beautiful, beautiful smile that looks back at you, if you can't see the presence of God in the creations all around you, then you are poor in spirit. We all are. We don't take time to go out there and love, to enjoy the things that are in, in our lives. The other day, a friend of mine said that she's come from Armenia, uh, where there's a different way of living. And she said, you know, ever since I've been to America over here, you know why I live? I live to work. I thought about that. Isn't that sad? We wake up in the morning with what intention? So we can go to work. How sad is that? Instead of waking up in the morning and thanking God for the blessings that we have, thanking God for the mountains that we see, the oceans that are out there, that may be a drive away. How about the children that we have, our grandchildren, the faces that they have, the excitement, the tomorrows that they believe in, the idea of hope for tomorrow. Do we take the time to look at that? And if we don't, we are poor. We are maimed. We are blind to the beauty that is all around us. And Jesus is telling us right here that the kingdom is for all of us. There's no such thing as chosen people. There's no such thing as God loving one people over another people. He loves each of us, every one of us equally, because we are all his children. What we need to do is accept that invitation, that accept, accept that invitation to become part of God's family. And in so doing, extend our invitations to everyone out there. What does that mean? It's not about parties. It's not about card lists. It's not about gifts. It's about giving of ourselves to one another, extending our hands to each other, helping out one another, finding out that this season is really a season about giving the ultimate gift, giving of yourself, because God gave of himself to us. That's what Jesus wants for his birthday. That's the birthday gift that he talks about. If you want to do something for me, he says, do it for one another. Remember, in the Gospel of Matthew, he sets up this beautiful story. He says that, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. And people are going to say, wait, wait, when did we see you hungry? Because obviously, you know, if Jesus came to my door and he knocked on it and he said, hey, I'm hungry. Sure, I'd say, come on in, I want to feed you. And Jesus says, when you've done it for the least of my brothers, you've done it for me. Take a look around you. Who are the least of his brothers? Well, certainly we all are. But the least of his brothers, we see today in Syria, we see throughout the Middle East, we see situations in Armenia, we see situations right in our own backyard. We see people who are looking and longing for love, for attention, for affection, for belonging. Can we find a place for them? You see, in a few weeks when we celebrate Christmas, we're going to remember that Jesus came into a world where there was no room for him. In fact, there was no room at the inn, and they sent him off to be born in a manger. Can we find that room in our hearts right now for the people all around us? That's what Christian giving is all about. I know you're going to have your office parties. I know you're going to be making your list. God bless you. Alongside of that, because I know the pressure is tremendous on these kind of things alongside that or if you're brave enough to abandon that give of yourself give the true gift this this christmas season give the love that is in your heart and give it without any expectation in return and trust me you're going to be the happiest person on christmas morning because you're going to know that you have given the ultimate gift just as god has given his ultimate gift
I look forward to spending some time with you next week as we continue and we get closer to Christmas. Until then, I want to remind you that in all things, including your Christmas shopping, give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.